This relates to the Great Commission, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. It was God's plan from the beginning, what the New Testament tells us is the mystery of the gospel, that Israel would be his vehicle to bring salvation to the Gentile nations. Or the goyim, a light to the Gentiles. This goes straight back to the book of Genesis chapter 12, where through Abraham, all the tribes, all the peoples of the earth would be blessed. It was always God's plan to encompass the universal salvation. But Israel would be his mechanism. He came to his own first. They had the scriptures, they had the heritage, they had the messianic expectation, and to them belong the oracles of God. Once, once, he groomed a cater of believing people among his own nation, Israel. That is the people of the book, of the covenant, of the Torah. Once he had them as a base, then it could expand to the Samaritans, who were semi-Jewish in their theology, Mongol Jews, albeit, and then from there to the Gentile nations. We see this commencing, of course, with Cornelius and his family, and then in Acts 13 with the ministry of Paul and Barnabas. We have turning points in Acts 8 to the Samaritans, Acts chapter 10 to the Romans, and then the ministry of Paul and Barnabas to the Greek world. So we see this happening. But first he needed a people of his own who would have been able to understand what he was teaching, who would have become his vehicles, that is his missionary staff, his evangelistic team to begin evangelizing the rest of the world. To this day, the gospel remains available to the Jew first by virtue of covenant. He came into his own, but his own would not believe. But to those who did believe, he gave the right to become the children of God. There were some of the Jews and of the pagans who did believe, and there still are. But the gospel was and remains available to the Jew first by virtue of covenant, by virtue of patriarchal promise. That is the reason. There was in no sense anything not for the people who are not of Jewish descent. On the contrary, we see this. Jesus went into Lebanon. He went to Tyre. He went to Sidon. He went to the Syrophoenicians. In fact, Josephus tells us many Gentiles began to believe in him. When the Roman centurion came to him, Jesus did not turn him away. But he made it clear he was a Jew, and they had to believe in the Jewish God and forsake their pagan beliefs. That's why he told the Syrophoenician woman, I cannot give the children's food to the dogs. Actually, it's a diminutive in Greek. It's like puppies, um, a cute term almost. Uh, he, he was not insulting them ethnically, but he was saying is, your pagan beliefs are fit for dogs, not for humans. He made them deal with their wrong beliefs. Likewise, the Samaritan woman, before he could reveal himself and totally to the Samaritan woman, he told her, when she began with the Samaritan belief system, you Jews have this mountain, we have that mountain, he said, lady, you don't know that what you, of that which you speak. You don't know what you're talking about. Salvation comes from the Jews. He had to get a cater of people from among Israel as his messengers to go to the Samaritans and to go to the Gentiles. But in his own life and in his own ministry, we see that. He goes to the Jews, he goes to the Samaritans in John 4, and, and he uses the example of the Good Samaritan, and he even goes to the Gentiles in Lebanon. What he told the apostles to do in Matthew 10 follows the same pattern he played out himself and follows the same pattern he commanded in the Great Commission, and follows the same pattern that we see played out in the Book of Acts. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded 
in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kendall and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kendall. Kendall. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.